Good day, my lovely listeners. You are listening to the Forty Orty Podcast. Tune in every week to explore inspiring stories and insightful information that dive headfirst into the world of autism and mental health. With all those tantalizing tongue twisters out of the way, let's get into the show. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the 40 Audio Podcast. It has been a long time, my friends, and I am sorry that I have not been uploading to my little podcast stream as usual. For anybody who's joining me for the first time, my name is Thomas Henley from the Asperger's Growth Channel. I make videos on autism and mental health, and today we are doing a podcast on autism at Christmas time. I am joined with a very popular and very cool social media influencer, adult, adult autistic. Adulting autistic, close. Adulting yeah, autistic, yeah, yeah, nearly yeah. got it. Yeah, I see <laughs> But you may call her uh, Tyler. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> no, that's <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Pretty good. Still um, recharging from the uh, the Christmas experience. <laughs> um, it has been a little bit um, stressy over these Christmas times, you know, having to go about and meet talk to family and constantly be surrounded by people absolutely mad one it? what did you get up to over christmas um it most mostly just preparing for christmas day had a little bit of a christmas party oh. with my family uh, my nana is uh, currently at home um because she has dementia and she we've just we decided this year to bring her back oh that's um, cute back home and i i sort of watched watched over her for the day and she was she did a lot better than I thought, and so that made me very happy. But, but yeah, uh, what did you get up to? Um, I went around to my nana's for Christmas dinner and then um, just chilled with the fam, then got dropped back here, had work to do the next day. So it wasn't really like a massive break for me. Straight back into work. Yeah, fully. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a special needs teacher, so I, I, have, I can wait until January. Oh, that seems to be a nice break. Yeah. No, I've been in any day that's not a bank holiday. Oh, a lot of um, a lot of work to do then. Fully. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, okay, so uh, do you want to give everybody a little bit of an introduction into who you are and your channel? Not your channel, <laughs> your Instagram page. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so I'm Tyler. I'm 22 from Manchester in the UK. Um, I recently, I say recently, it was like six months ago now, graduated uni. Um, what else do I do? So basically I started what is now adult and autistic because as I was coming to the end of my final year of uni, I was doing my dissertation in social media. Cause that's kind of what I have like a massive interest in community building and just the power of social media and also the damages that it can cause. Um, but I wanted to get into blogging in general because I liked it but then I also wanted to not just put out a load of trash content and just be another person posting for the sake of posting there is a lot of power in social media and I wanted to use it to address what I saw as a need because when I was finishing my final year of uni and transitioning into like finding a flat finding a job like how do you adult water bills like how do you sell like all these questions I'm just like mate I've got no idea um and also <laughs> jobs and interviews and like all this stuff. And I was like, ah, so that's where adult and autistic came from. I started the Instagram account at first on the back of my personal blog, which I'd put up a couple of posts on about um, it kind of myself and just rambling and not ranting, but just like chatting a bit and talking about my experience in like educa- in the education system. Silly me, I deleted my blog and deleted all those posts. But (laughs) they went down quite well. But the ones that banged um, were the ones that talked about autism. And then obviously with my own struggles, I decided to bring the two together and started Adult and Autistic. The aim uh, of it at the minute is to just generate conversation around autism for people who are like in that I should be an adult, but I don't know how kind of phase. So when 
yeah, so like anyone who's probably from like, I don't know, 16 to 18, all the way up until like 30. Like I, I can't relate to the troubles that a 30 year old has. Like you probably have a mortgage. I can just about make my rent at the minute. So anyone who can apply, like see my content and it applies to them or they can see themselves in it somehow, then that's who it's for really. So you're sort of giving people uh, someone, someone relatable and someone who's trying to sort it out and yeah fully like there are a load of like think back to youtube in like 2000 oh let's do a let's do a decade jump back so like, yeah. <laughs> so like i think like 2009 who we sat there watching like alfie days and zoella and all them lot and it's like that's cool but like i can just about leave my house so how am i supposed to imagine myself living this amazing life in brighton like so whereas i like to think i'm more relatable to some people especially those who are autistic because I'm autistic and I'm still trying to not live a normal life because it's obviously like in my opinion no such thing as a normal life but just try and live my best life and I do want to be social but it's just a case of like finding the ways to be social I do want to have a job but it's like about finding the right job for me given my autistic traits and like all these little things and Mm -hmm. I've also got like a massive interest in productivity and um like might develop a type content and like I just love that kind of stuff. So again, marrying that with being autistic and just living life is kind of what I'm trying to do at the minute. And then I want to create more autistic safe spaces. Um, so lit- like legit in-person meetups, not just online, get to connect with other people who are going through the things that you are. And obviously um, my, my thought process at the minute is that because you know that you're going to meet another like a whole bunch of people who have had the same challenges to get out of the house as you have that you're just going to be a lot more willing to attend yeah definitely and i I think there there is a lot of lack in the um in the amount amount of like services and the support available for any anybody with asper just anybody with like typically high functioning autism um there isn't much post 16 like yeah fully like it, at all especially at uni like it's it yeah. can be really difficult I found out towards the end of my time at uni that there is actually a service in my university for autistic students but again it's the whole thing I because I, I met up with a lady it's funny on my second to last day of uni I met up with the woman who runs the service and told her about the whole plan I had for adults and autistic she was like totally on board really loved it and she's like I'm surprised I haven't met you before but given the way you communicate and even the way you emailed me I can tell that the service wouldn't have been right for you I was like well then who is it right for and where am I supposed to go <laughs> like I just, it, it's like when when you are what they would say is high functioning you fall into this gap of we know you're not neurotypical but, but you can kind you, of get by. Yeah, but you're not you're not diverse enough for us to really care enough. And it's like I completely get the NHS is strapped and there's not enough funding. And that's why I think peer to peer support and making use of so like social media and the, the, all the opportunities we've got now, like podcasting, YouTube, and like Instagram. Like think of there are all these influencers that can help or online experts for like everything at the minute. Like and that type of approach can be applied to like filling the gap that there is in services for autistic people yeah definitely and I think you know kind of coming on and and having a chat about these issues does does a lot to raise awareness for them and by raising awareness the 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 you know the sort of the, the myth around autism is all the myths and stuff are dispelled and people awareness to who stay. Like, who do you think benefits when awareness is raised? I think what the what one of the problems is is that people don't really understand that there are a lot of autistic people struggling. I think a lot of people group the fact that they are autistic into the reason why they're struggling rather mm-hmm. than um, the support that's put in place or the mental health uh, and isolation and bullying that inevitably comes along with it in a lot of cases. And it, it can be, I think, I think it'd be quite, it can be quite beneficial to give people 
a more personal angle so that they understand that just because we are are autistic you mm-hmm. know we, it doesn't mean that we are having a worse life it just means that we need some a, some help in adjusting to a, a society that really isn't built for us yeah i rate right. that but i just think like i think my issue with the word awareness is that like once you've raised awareness what then because like yeah take take grand like extreme example but take grenfell like everyone was aware of the failings of like that cladding should not have been on that building. But then just look at what happened in Bolton the other day, like a uni with the exact same cladding on it that everyone was aware is like flammable and problematic. The exact same cladding also went up in fire. So like awareness means nothing if action is not taken. Yeah, I I do completely agree with that. It's, I think one of the difficulties is trying to find a way of, get get getting that awareness into action like i think there is there is a lot of difficulty in approaching things like that because you know like um i think even even with um all of the like companies and organizations that try and push for things some sometimes there needs to be sort of a mass support of certain ideals and there needs to be a focus on autism so that actions can be raised and sort of criticisms of policies and um, support systems can be you know put out there and it's it is a very difficult thing and I, I honestly it's it's really hard to know what way to take it but you know hope, hopefully just trying to to push for things and trying to get in contact with organizations and try to put your messages out as much as possible is the best way of doing that but yeah it's it's, sure. it's one way i don't know i don't know because no one really knows what the best way the most efficient way is but yeah it's definitely one way it can happen so um yeah so we talked a little bit about why you've chosen to be an influencer and what drives you um what do you believe are the main reasons why autistic individuals struggle with mental health? Like, cause it is, it is a really big issue in the autistic community. Yeah, definitely. Like they're all the, I mean, I don't know if they're off the top of my head, but there are hella stats out there that you can go easily Google. But um, I'd say one of the reasons you struggle with mental health is because, uh, well, two reasons I can think of like immediately processing emotions is hard enough as it is by the time you realize that you're sad, you're depressed. And that then what do you do? So I guess like the A of that would be processing emotions. And then the point B leading on to that is CBT doesn't actually fit for a lot of us because it's not, oh, for me personally, like it's not logical enough. Like mm-hmm. there, there's a lot of what whys and there's only so many whys a therapist is willing to hear. There's only so many whys, like a, a counselor will hear until they're like, right, I've got to go and see someone else. Like, <laughs> you've only got an hour with me today. Um, so that'd be one thing, a solution to that. Um, for me, I've really taken to stoicism and just adopting a different mindset. And stoicism is quite linked to CBT, but um, so cognitive behavioral therapy, but it, it for, I, I don't know there's something that I can relate to a bit more with that it's a bit more logical it's I've known that like um all the successful Roman like emperors like they used it like and it's it's a lot less wishy-washy to me than someone trying to like someone sat there trying to understand me and tell me how I should live my life um yeah. So then another thing is just jet, like a lot of the causes of depression are also sim- like traits and like traits of being autistic or well, not traits, but just like something that autistic people experience a lot. So like you mentioned before, loneliness, um, feelings of isolation, not being able to connect and communicate well with others. If you don't have anything in your life that's like stimulating or interesting to you, obviously quite a few of us have what people call special interests. I just like to call them hobbies because that's really what they are. But um, we're just very good at them. We're either really good at them. <laughs> well, that's, it's not even that. Like some people, neurotypical people are really good at their hobbies. Like I just don't think there's a need for a word that says we have hobbies. 
Because mm-hmm. what does special, what like to you, what does special interest mean? Well, it, it is, I think like it's characterized as abnormal fixation on- Why is it abnormal brain. though? Like if, if, say if I came to you and I had a really good in-depth knowledge about how to make, I don't know, protein powder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I then launched a product that sold millions. No one would then come along and say, oh, she had a special interest. (laughs) I do. I I completely get, I completely get that. I think it's just, just, um, I get, I get the way of explaining it for parents just so that they don't feel. Your kid has a hobby. Like, let them (laughs) live. I understand. I completely get that it can offer comfort to some autistic people. Like when someone comes up to you, like, "Oh my god, why do you care so much about this?" And it's like, I bet you know the lives of the Kardashians inside out. Let me sit here with my. <laughs> let's use a stereotypical example. Let me sit here with my trains. Like, it's not that deep. Like, everyone has a hobby. It just so happens that we go all in with ours, and just because mm-hmm. we can commit to something in a way that you can't, don't give it a label. Just so it makes you feel better about it. Like. That's just oh, that's just one thing that gets like terminology is just unnecessary sometimes, and I think that when we start using terminology that's different to the rest of society, it then creates this othering. And yeah, we are different, but when you look down to the root cause of what a special interest is, it's just a hobby. But back to your original question on depression. Um, yeah, so a lot of the trait the things that autistic experiences autistic people des- describe having are also general um symptoms of depression even anxiety like overthinking is just a thing that we naturally do like if you give me an exam question i will think about the five different ways you could have meant that because i don't play your language game so yeah um what was i saying yeah i don't like don't play your language game so then that that leads to overthinking in that sense translates to other areas of your life and just makes you anxious Again, another symptom of depression is having a poor diet and not saying that all of us people have poor diets, but just we have food preferences. And if the only thing you eat are the things that you prefer that aren't necessarily the most nutritious, doesn't, or they could be nutritious, but if you're just eating the same thing, you're not getting a wide variety of everything that you need to function. You need to find other ways to make your diet one that you can, you know, thrive yeah. off. Like, And there are so many little things that go into living a good or balanced life. And it just takes one of those things to be off for us to focus on them, get stuck on them and fix on them and obsess over them that it's not surprising that we end up with like higher rates of other mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So you're, um, so you you highlighted like something to do with the, you know, uh, CBT. Yeah. yeah. Um, So I, I, in my youth, in my youth, in the old days, <laughs> um, <laughs> I used to, um, I think I did CBD, CBT for about five, six years. Yeah. Oh, wow. And um, I honestly just, I found it absolutely useless. <laughs> As you said, we, we need like, we like a logical, because we need like a logical explanation. And, and here I've got this person Trying to give me coping mechanisms. Wait, wait, wait. To, was your yeah. um, was your counselor, therapist, whatever they're called, I don't actually know. Were they spe- did they specialise in autism? No, because yeah, there really <laughs> just isn't there really just isn't anybody yeah. that, that we can find that 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 does that kind of thing. And even if they do, it would be private, and we'd have to travel to somewhere like London or something. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I I found it very difficult. And, you know, as you said, you highlighted the thing about, was it stoic, stoicism? Yeah. What, what is that like? So, to my very limited knowledge, it is a philosoph- philo- I don't know, I don't, I don't think stoicism itself is a philo- philosophical concept, but it's something within the area of philosophy and it's just about the way you approach life in general. Um, so like Seneca is one of the, big stoics i think there's another there's like a couple of them and the general vibe is let me try and find the post that i made that like resonated with me it's just very much uh 
internal look at you, like control what you can control and make the best of anything outside of your control type thing. Yes. Mm. So when it comes to waking up in the morning, you get out of bed and it's raining outside. You do not control the weather and that weather has very limited impact on your day, really. Like, do you not have a coat and an umbrella? Like, mm-hmm. you can prepare for that. There's no su- in. I kind of feel like in my head now, there's no such thing as bad weather. It's rain. W- rain is good for some people. And if you plan to be outside all day, prepare for that. You can't control the weather, so plan for good. For plan for what people call good or bad weather. Um, and then so it's like sort of trying to take take taking control of things that you are able to deal with. Yeah, and then anything beyond that, just trying leave to, it. Yeah, right, leave you can, it and not. In terms of communicating with other people as well, like I, like I often find that my tone isn't appropriate for what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. like my yeah, my nan told my nan told it annoys me that, the heck out of my girlfriend. It does. Yeah, like it's, yeah, I'm, 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 I, even my friends have to tell them like listen to what I'm saying, not how I'm saying it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so when like the other day, my nan told me that my uh, step granddad had like fallen down the stairs, and I was like, oh, that's a shame. And she's like, oh, Tyler, that's not very nice. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you being sarcastic. I wasn't being sarcastic. <laughs> I wasn't being sarcastic. She's like, that wasn't a very, that I wasn't, feel a, your pain. That wasn't a very I nice thing to pain. say. And I was like, well, what would you have rather me said? And she's like, well, you should have said, oh, 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 that's a shame. Why am I putting all that fake pretense at the start of the end? Like the words are the same. And I know at my core, I am a nice person. So anything I then say, no matter how it's said, is said with the intention of, like at the core of being a nice person. So however you take it, that's on you. What I say is what I meant. And that's something mm-hmm. that I've taken. Um, obviously there are certain times when you can't be that black and white and you can't say, well, I said what I meant and that's how it is. Cause there are times when it'll work in your favor to essentially play the game. So like if you go into a job interview and you're just sat there monotone to people who don't understand, you don't know you well enough yet to know that how you communicate, just mirror them. I mean, that's what I do. Not saying other people should, but if it gets you where you need to be and gets you what you want, then just do it. And then later on, take the time to explain what you need. Like even the way I present myself online, there are, because I do also want neurotypicals to see my content and think, oh, she's autistic. Like, and, and then look further. I don't present in the same way other autistic people choose to present themselves online. I present myself in the way I choose to, but also there are similarities in the way to other neurotypical people present themselves online. And I'm not trying to shy away from that. Mm -hmm. So you're just presenting you. I am. Yeah. I'm just presenting me, but then there is, because I am on like one end of the, of the spectrum, there are people who are at the other end who can't relate to me or think that I'm not worthy or not, the right person to speak on autism. And it's like, well, if I'm not the right person for you, then that's it. I'm not right for you, but there are other people who I'll be right for. And even if I'm not right for anyone, I'm right for myself and that's all I can control. Like I'm not doing this to, I'm not doing this for the sake of it. I have, an intention behind it. And my intention is to create these autistic safe spaces and how I get, I obviously want to get there being as true to me as possible. And I know, Mm -hmm. I I know my goal and I know what, what my, like what my intentions are. So I'm going to keep going and until it doesn't work. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, what, God, um, I'm just trying to think. This That's is right. definitely going to be edited out. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. I'm going to leave it in. Let people see my struggles. I did I... that in a couple of my episodes. There was one that I put, I mean, the first two I'd edited, but it took me forever because I, I, I'd done them after work when I was burnt out and just, I had questions pre-written, but even reading was a challenge. And then I was stumbling over my words. So I'd edited the first two and I was like, you know what? Third one, I'm just going to put it up. And I explained it. Like, I think I explained at the beginning that, 
I'm, I'm mumbling today. And you can hear what I'm saying, but I'm just repeating myself and I'm just tripping over my words, but this is life. Like, this is the only time I could fit in the recording and you probably experience the same things at the end of your day. And I just yeah. rolled with it. Like, <laughs> but yeah. Um, would, um, so t- t- talking about um, Christmas and festivities, mm-hmm. are there any like outstanding problems that you that you see that um, autistic struggle with in festive times or holidays or Christmas individually. It's just so loud. Like, it's un- like not unnecessary because some people like it. And I, right, it sounds mad when I say this because I go to like massive warehouse techno raves and I organize events and I go to nightclubs. Nice. I used to work in nightclubs. Like <laughs> when I say loud, it's just a different kind of loud. Like, Lots of different noises but, like, everywhere. Loads of different noises, loads. And also this like expectation that you need to do something with someone just because it's Christmas. Like any other month of the year, you don't want to talk to me. So leave me alone in December as well. <laughs> <laughs> it just does not make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't, you don't conscribe to the whole social norm constructed idea of a holiday I, I, no, just... I agree to the I, I, I get the idea of the holiday I am actually like Catholic so the whole Christmas side of Christmas I back that my issue is like I, I also like the coming together of family and like the doing things together but it's a because to some extent it's the commercialization of that so mm-hmm. the if the whole again leaking back to intention if the whole point of us going out for this meal is to spend time together then why can't we just go around to someone's house order food in in a setting where i'll be more comfortable where we'll spend less money and everyone can just you know relax and just fully be themselves rather than have to like sit up proper and not talk too loudly and god forbid you laugh too loudly because another table over there will look over like (laughs) and it's just this whole, uh, oh, and then you've got, see, this sounds, this is going to sound a bit funny because I do use Instagram and I do post what some would say a lot on social media, but yeah, I can spend time with you and do something with you and you not show that online. Like, did you, did you know that? Are you aware? Like you put, put your Instagram <laughs> story away. Do you want to be here with me or do you want to be here with your followers? Because you just want to show people that you're with someone. So and yeah, with someone yeah. and at somewhere that's like a cool like place to be. And that's like, that's mm-hmm. not just like specific to Christmas, like all year round. Like there'll be times I go out with my friends and be like, have you forgotten your phone? I'm like, no, it's in my bag. <laughs> and it, but the, those people, like I say friends that I try to distance myself from them because like, I can't, I can't get that mindset. Like I don't understand it. Like, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I understand I understand with the whole because I I was trying to think about why why Christmas is is so difficult and I posted a a video about Christmas mm-hmm. um and I got a lot I got a lot of comments and it's sort of I had I had the idea that Christmas for autistic people would be very difficult yeah because there is a lot of loneliness there's a lot of ad, even even in adulthood there is a lot of isolation. Ole. There's a lot of negative views of holidays for autistic people. And, you know, also also with all the festivities and all the, the happy commercial stuff going on TV and and going on everywhere and yeah, people like, saying, oh, you got to buy this, buy this, you got to meet together. It's everything's great. Everything's fun. Let's listen to Christmas songs. And in the background, you've got really poor rate you know really high rates of you know things like suicide and really high high rates of people feeling bad because they're mourning and you know there's, yeah, like there's the a world, lot of expectations the for just because it. it's christmas like everything else that happens on any other day of the year still happens around christmas time so all the, all the things that you've already mentioned and then there's also things of like just general life like if you if say I don't know. People just say, oh, you should be happy. It's Christmas. Why? <laughs> like, why just because it's this one specific day? It's the same with birthdays as well, though. Like, it's, and I guess it's the kind, the kind of the same 
Well, it would be. It's like Jesus' birthday, so you kind of do the same thing. Expectations. Thing, it's your birthday. Yeah, but like the expectations of like what you should do because it's your birthday, where you should go because it's your birthday, what you should wear, what you should eat, what, yeah. all these things. You've got to drink. Yeah, You've got to like, drink because it's, it's an occasion. Because it's Christmas. <laughs> because it's your birthday. Yeah. It's like, do you really need a day to be happy? Like, do you need a specific day to tell you that you should be happy? Because I, I, I'm of the opinion that like your whole life you should attempt to be happy. Yeah, definitely. So... Yeah. And then with the loneliness, it's, it, I think it's exacerbated for those who experience the um, feeling of like feeling alone, even when you're in a room full of people. Mm-hmm. So if you're in a room full of people, you could even be having a conversation with someone, like not that you've been left out or anything like that. It's just that you don't feel any sort of connection with anyone. So you don't feel like you're still, like you're a part of anything. Yeah. You're just, so you're just there. On the side and- yeah. Being, like you just being there existing like you, just, <laughs> yeah. just another just another table cart like placeholder at the table like all this stuff mm-hmm. it's a mad one and it, i think like just because it takes so much effort for us to be social and so much energy to be able to to do social occasions and even even if even if we put all of our energy into these festivities and we put all our energy into communicating with people some sometimes it, it it doesn't come across in a way that they like or some you know they they don't yes and it, I guess they it's, always it's pick like, up on the differences and they don't pick up on the fact that you're there and you're trying to talk to them and yep it's for a lot of autistic people it's just really difficult especially when they feel like they're expected to to do it on a time of year where they feel pretty terrible yeah <laughs> but it's um. So so yeah, those so are those the like the main things that you think Christmas you know can be so so bad? Cause I think I think it can be really difficult. Yeah, there are there are obviously people. like loads of things. I'm not I I would be here forever if I covered all of them, but <laughs> off the top of my head, yeah, they're the two that I would mention. All right, so uh, that begs the question: What them. can autistic individuals do? To make the Christmas holidays easier. Oh my god! Just stop. Like, how do I, how do I word this and not swear? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, it would be go back into. Uh, how do I how do I word it? What do I, what do I want to say? Let me let me think before I speak for once. Collect your thoughts. Yeah. Collect your thoughts. 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 All those thoughts. Um, what do I want to say? I've even forgotten what I wanted to say now. Bloody hell! So it can be it can be any like personal advice. Or oh no, it is. It is. It is. Can do oh or... right, yeah. So, um, the way to have the best Christmas is to have the best Christmas for you. Like, do what you want, spend time how you want with who you want, and beyond that, just not avoid like. The, the social pressure because it's going to be there but let it take it in and let it go like understand that cool that's how you want me to do my Christmas but you can take that you can listen to that and you can do your Christmas that way I'm going to do mine this way in the same way that some people choose to eat meat and some people choose to be vegan you can choose to do your Christmas in the way you want to do it like there are some people who don't even celebrate Christmas. Like that's a thing. You could be one of them. Like it doesn't, it, especially, I guess if you're in a family that is heavy on traditions and like is like very, uh, what do I want to say? They're very like. Pushy, trying to get you not to even, do it. Not even pushy, just that this is how it's done. This is what we do. Um mm-hmm we all like wear Christmas jumpers and wake up at 9am on Christmas day and have this breakfast and like (laughs) it's all that stuff in it. Try to understand why they like doing that. Just ask, maybe not in the kind of general way of like, why, 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 but just in a, what do you get from this? Or see, flip it on its head and say, what can you get from this? Like, so maybe you'll be having this big Christmas breakfast when all you really want is toast, but there's like, a million things on the table but if you all sat there as a family together what could you get from that experience like you could learn something new about a family member you 
could try a new food if that's what you wanted to do. Like just make the best of every situation you're going to be in that you feel like you have to, but don't want to be. And my, my, my first piece of advice would be just not put yourself in those situations. But if you're not at that point yet, then just find one thing that you can get out of those situations and focus yeah. on that, achieve that. And then next time or the next part of the day, when you've got another thing that you need to do that's Christmassy, then just take it step, take it step by step. But then also the word like Christmassy, like what does that mean for you? Like Christmassy for me is seeing my brother and we make, like we bake something. And this year that didn't happen. So I don't feel like I had a Christmas, even though I went to my nan's, we had this massive Christmas dinner and I saw all the members of my family. I didn't see the person that I see and makes it Christmassy for me. And I didn't do that one thing that makes Christmas Christmas for me. So this year I didn't have a good Christmas. Though on paper, it would look to other people like I did. Yeah. So it's all, it's all, it's all about, yeah. The end of the day, if you're like, you're upset, you're the only one who's got to deal with it. You're the only one who can like make yourself happy. So. Yeah. And I think, um, there, there is a lot of like usefulness in be, being able to just assert what you want to do. Like maybe you just want to lie in with, some somebody or, or go to the cinema or you just want to go for a walk in the yeah right. and like, if that is what you want to do and if, if that's what you want to do try and tell those around you that that's what you want to do and yeah. more often than not they'll probably be quite accepting of it or you can come to some sort of compromise and be like well we'll do your your kind of christmas this year we'll do our kind of christmas next year or mix the two types of things together have moments where you can um, collect, like not collect your thoughts. What's the word? Just like if you deal with sensory overload, r- prevent yourself from burning out, and then, give yourself some time. Yeah, just take to some time to out, chill out, and socially recharge so that you can not melt down in front of your entire yeah, family. Yeah, <laughs> like usually, I don't know from what I heard. Like most people have the mornings with just their immediate family, and then later on in the day is when the whole family come round. So maybe in between those two things, you take some time for you and do what makes Christmas Christmassy for you, or you just do what you enjoy doing on every other day because Christmas Day is just another day. Yeah, and if and if you do if you struggle with like so- social interaction, you you do need to take a break. And, you know, a lot of the times I feel, because I feel like I've worked on my social skills and worked on everything that I can do. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes I feel like I can just go for the whole day just constantly socializing. But, you know, like I think on on Christmas Day, I think I lasted till about 7 p.m., which is quite good, I think, because it was from the early morning throughout the day. Um, as you said, yeah, it was immediate family in the morning, some presents, then Christmas dinner and a lot of people and, and stuff. And I, I did need a break. So I just went up. I said, guys, I need to have a little bit of a social break. I'm going to go upstairs for an hour or so. And they were like, all right, because they were just watching the movie. So I was just like, you know, I'm going to. Yeah, like times like that, it's not really important that you're there because everyone's sat just watching a screen anyway. Just monging out. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that you know that that's a lot of a lot of tips for a lot of people i think for a for a large majority of people that would really help i hope so um what but the, there is the st- still the issue of people on their own because i i i have you know i when i put on my video i had a lot of comments about um about people just not having anyone to spend it to, with and want it, wanting to be around people and right. feeling alone. And it's something that I've been trying to think of. And there's there's a few things, but there's nothing like definitive that I can, you know, say, because it is, it is a very difficult thing. I, th- to I think my with. solution with that would be if you're alone and don't want to be alone, then right, like, first of all, if you're alone and don't know what to make of it, there's nothing wrong with being alone. Um, if you want to spend your time alone, then you can continue to do so. And again, make your own Christmas, have your own Christmas. I'm going to spend Christmas on my own next year after the experience I had this year. 
Um, yeah, just splash out a little bit. Not even splash out. Like, it's like have a complete self-indulgent <laughs> day. Like it doesn't have, it doesn't have to cost anything. It just just focus on you. Like I want to. This this is how I envisage my Christmas next year. In the morning, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to have my general breakfast, which is porridge which is nice and then i'm gonna Gold, golden syrup no i just go for sugar porridge sugar um, and then whatever seeds i'm on at the minute because i like i do seed cycling so whichever seeds i'm gonna have as a topping and pop them on and then i'm gonna probably get dressed go for a walk just around wherever i'm living at the minute nowhere exotic just around the block then come in and have a shower put on some super comfortable clothes read for a little bit and then have lunch and then spend the rest of the day like I don't know probably painting my nails probably working on the blog I'm not gonna lie and then <laughs> yeah I've, I've I found it really difficult not to do any work yeah <laughs> I really it's, wanted it's... to like make a video or something and I felt yeah I don't yeah first period in, in that sense is hard for me why didn't you <laughs> I just didn't have any time because my com- my computer is downstairs and everyone is downstairs. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I can't just be like, All right, guys, I'm gonna go off for about three or four hours. <laughs> Me, I certainly would. <laughs> like, together. you're the only one who has control over your time, and if that's how you want to spend it, do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> then, yeah. So that's what my my Christmas is gonna look like. I'm gonna have a fantastic time on my own. Um. But if you're on your own and if you're on your own and feel alone, which is very different to being on your own, um, like the feeling of alone, you want to be around other people, then there are loads of people probably in your community around you that actually want to, that either want to be with people and aren't or um, need your help. So you can always volunteer down at like a homeless shelter or like a place where they serve food to people who live on the streets. Like you can volunteer on those days, like they need help. And a lot of the volunteers just go there for a couple of hours. But if you're free all day, they would love to have you down there all day. Look around, see what's in your area, see who you can help with. Like I'm assuming that you want to be around people. Um, And maybe a lot of people isn't what's going to work well for you, but go to them, speak with them, let them know you're autistic and see if there's any way you can help out and be around a smaller group of people rather than hundreds. Maybe you could be in the kitchen, wash it, like cleaning some pots. Maybe you could be behind a counter. So there's a bit of a barrier between you and the other people. So you feel a little bit safer. There are people out there that could benefit from your existence on that day. Definitely. So if you are fully on your ones, but want to spend time with your friends on Christmas day, like a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Just ask them, brace yourself for rejection because they might say no, spend it with my family or they might give some reason. Or if they say no, just don't take it to heart because like it is Christmas and you are inviting yourself around. But just give it a go. Like Reach out to people. Yeah. Like force yourself upon them. Just, just make it happen. <laughs> it's like you are the only one who can make yourself happy. And if there's no point sitting there and be like, oh, I wish so-and-so invited me around, ask them. They probably think you have Christmas plans. Like a lot of yeah, definitely. A lot of my friends, um, or people that I knew didn't realise that I wasn't doing something for one of my birthdays. Like, oh, you should have said something. I was like, well, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know. But now, if you want something to happen, make it happen. Yeah, and I think everybody, everybody appreciates effort, whether it just be offering spend time with them. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, it's, you don't have to spend time with them. You just need to make sure that. You just need to make sure that they know you're there and that. Well, even if it's the other way around and you're the one who is on their own and you know that they're going to be spending time with other people, just like, oh, can I come? Not I'm like, it's like, oh, can I come around for a bit? Maybe not even for the full day, maybe not for dinner, but like in the morning, like just propose a time when you can go around and see them and so that you don't feel alone Mm. all of Christmas Day. Yeah, just open up and, and express you know, how you feel and how, and, and that you, you're worrying about what to do on Christmas day and you need a bit of help. And yeah, if, just put it all out there. Like, I'm going to be on my own on Christmas day. Can I come around to yours? It's not, it's, yeah. it's, it's simple as it needs to be straight to the point. Um, and it's highly unlikely they're going to say no to that. And if they do, you need to like, just ask a couple of more questions about them as a person. But yeah, 
community centers, events. I don't. Is that a, are they a thing? I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, you could ask. Have a look. I'm not a clue. Like, I don't even live near a community center. I think it'll like vary from region to region. Yeah, town I'm to a town. city kid. <laughs> um, you know, some some autistic societies. If you have one that's local. You know, they put on stuff. Yeah, if you've got Maybe it. get in contact if they don't have anything that's going on for next Christmas. Get in contact, say, hey, this might be a good idea. A lot of autistic people feel a bit isolated and alone at this time. Let's just all get together and chat, if anything. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of things that you can do. You just need to just need to get over that first hurdle of asking and inquiring and it's it, it can be very difficult, especially if you feel, you know, in the slumps of isolation and depression and you feel like nobody wants you around. You're but... going to stay there if you don't take any action. Like, if you don't do anything about it, it's going to keep on perpetuating itself. Like, you, you got to do something about it. Definitely. And it, it is really difficult. And my, my obviously, like, sympathies go out to anybody who feels like that. And it's it's horrible that you have to feel like that when... You're just getting pounding constantly by all these commercials and Spotify adverts, and uh, I yeah, I it's difficult, isn't it? Um, so yeah, we, we sort of, we sort of talked about what can the individual do. Um, anything that others in wider society or people that know autistic people, what can they do? Like, what okay. can they do to help? Um. I think this is a bit of a hard question for me to answer because I am very much of the opinion if you want help, go and find it. But it is a lot easier if people do reach out to you, but then at the same time, you don't want to be overbearing. So I guess if you know someone and know they're autistic or even, you know what, just in general in life, like if you've got a friend and you're not quite sure what they're doing for Christmas, they've not really mentioned anything, ask. It's like, what have you got planned? Or even if you don't want to ask what they're doing, um, because you don't want to make them feel bad for having nothing or you think they might lie because some people would do that just to cover up and fit in. Um, just be like, oh, uh, do you want to come around to mine on Christmas Day around this time? Or just say, oh, if you, oh, you know what? Some people might have a full house on Christmas Day. Totally cool, totally fine. Find some time across this so-called festive period to do something with that person. Just be like, oh, do you want to do something? For a Starbucks, go for a little uh, pumpkin spice any, latte. Something that, you know, <laughs> something that you know they enjoy. Or just yeah. say, would you, um, or put it on them to decide what you do. Just be like, well, um, I, I've got some time on this day. What would you like to do? Awesome. So, yeah. Um. So yeah, that, that's. I feel like we've we've covered pretty much all that I want to uh, cover. And now comes the the most probably one of the most difficult questions that people struggle with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is the summary <laughs> which three things that we've mentioned do you think are most important to take away from this episode um, I'll give you a minute no, to think I, really, about I think it. I've got I've got one I've got one so the first one would be just to take action in general and everything but especially when it comes to this whole stuff about Christmas if you're going to be alone don't want to be alone take action sort it out um then what else did we talk? Um, have a look into stoicism. See if it's for you. If CBT is not, and third one would be there's a difference between being alone. No, there's a difference between what is it? What's it? There's a difference between <laughs> being being on your own and feeling alone. And to being on your own and no, there's just a, there's just a difference between do. being on your own and feeling alone. Like feeling alone is not the same as being on your own. You could be in a room full of people and you can still feel alone. You could be on your own and be content. Like I come in from work and I live on my own, so I'm on my own, but I don't feel alone. Like the feeling, the feeling of being alone is very different to being physically on your own and once you realize that and can separate the two and then can take action to make sure you don't feel alone when you're on your own, you can start exploring a lot of more things in life. Cause that's something that Brilliant. I've worked through this year and it's helped me a lot, especially now that I do live on my own completely. Like I've kind of phased where I've lived. So I think a year, two years ago, 
I lived in a house with four or three other people. Uh, Flatmates. Yeah, yeah, uni. yeah, uni. uni house. So I, had, I was in a house with four other people. Then, um, so that was a lot more communal. Like we were all chilling in the living room. Kitchen was really small. Then the year after that, I was in halls with eight other people, but because we all had our own rooms, all had their own locks, Ooh. and the kitchen got cleaned by someone else. It was a little bit more. You just we just share a kitchen. That's the only engagement we really had. And I rarely saw them because I know when they use the kitchen, I'd avoid them at those times. Um, so, and then now I live completely alone. Uh, not alone. Mm-hmm. I mean, on my own. <laughs> Messing up there myself. I live completely on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, so the growth that I've done over those couple of years to realize the difference between being on your own and feeling alone um, just brings a lot of like peace and frees up your, frees up your mind to think about other things and just not focus on that one feeling because it doesn't about need to your, be there. Uh, hobbies. Yeah, you, <laughs> you could think about your hobbies or you can like do just try new things or learn different parts about yourself, about what you like, what you don't like, or like, yeah. You can just like, you can, and if you want to talk to people, you can reach out and you can stagger it and you can. You're a lot less dependent on other people for yeah. your happiness once you realize that being on your own doesn't mean that you like, doesn't have to be synonymous with being alone. And, and it's not bad. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, if you uh, if you feel if you feel alone, do something about it. Same way, same way when you feel happy, you want to do more things that make you feel happy. It's the same way that when you're sad, you should stop doing things that make you feel sad, or avoid things that make you feel sad, or work out how to process. Like, if it's a negative emotion, do something to make yourself get back to base or get happy. Is my thoughts definitely very good? Um, did well on those summary questions. I usually have to have a few people. Usually have to do a few takes of that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, maybe jot some jot something down on the old uh, iOS notes page. Um, we got the last question is, which is one that I ask to everyone that comes on here. Mm-hmm. This is completely open, just a little bit of fun. So there's no right or wrong answer. All right. What does autism mean to you? Very broad. I know it is very broad. <laughs> um, I would say. Awesome means different. And I'm going to stick with that because different doesn't mean bad. So awesome to me means different. (laughs) I think differently, do things differently, and I actually kind of love it. Like I was, I had this massive... It wasn't a massive, it was just like a bit of a funny moment in the car with my friend on the way to like an event. And he, I brought a can in his car, but when I drank, I'd eaten in his car another time, he got really like, he was watching me because he didn't want me to drop anything. <laughs> and like, he's really protective but precious over his car. So he'd mm-hmm. moved the can from the chair because I'd just thrown it, I hadn't thrown it, I'd like put it in the car, had to run back in the house to get something, got back to the car and he'd moved it from the chair into the cup holder. Mm-hmm. But it was the cup holder nearer to him. So I'd thought that meant he didn't want me to drink in his car. Yeah. Because otherwise, why would you move it? I planned on drinking it when I got in. <laughs> Turns out he just put it there to help. And I brought it up with him a couple of weeks later and he was like, no, I just moved it so you could so you could have it. But it had somewhere to go. And I was like, oh. And then I explained the whole thing and he was like, actually laughing. I was like, I, I can laugh at those moments now myself. Um, but then... What was the point of me telling that story? Your difference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, and he was like, and I was like, I was just like, oh, gosh, I'm so autistic. And he was like, yeah, but you wouldn't change it. And I was like, I actually wouldn't because, like. Because that, that situation happening between two autistics, you prob- the, the drift would probably be understood. The drift. The, the, uh, you'd probably be on the same wavelength and you probably, you know, you wouldn't have those little strange moments where you don't know what each other's doing and thinking and <laughs> not even that it's just, it was just it's just that like my my like i guess some people would call them quirks and autistic tendencies like like a lot of the the, the only time they're actually a problem is when i come into contact with people who are ignorant yeah and or, they, don't, they don't like the problem the differences they can't handle it it's not, yeah, like they have a 
can't handle it or just don't, they're just, they're just ignorant. They're not open-minded. They're not willing to hear what I have to say, my explanations for the way I do things. I, I've learned to be a lot more willing to listen to where other people see I've gone wrong yeah. and then explain my reasoning for my actions to make them see why I did what I did. Yeah. So I have also realized that a lot of blow ups or just like, massive negative interactions can be avoided if I'm not on the verge of a burnout. So yeah, then that's a lot right. of that comes on me and it's like, I need to look after myself for the sake of my relationships with a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, not spend too much time around people constantly, make sure that you do things that you enjoy and make you relaxed. And I, but the thing is like, it's just, it's not even about spending time with, around people. It's about how you spend that time with people. Like if you're with someone who can, like I had a friend stay over for a couple of, like for a whole weekend. And if they completely knew that if I'm not talking to you, it's not because I've got a problem. It's just because I don't want to talk right now. Yeah. Like don't fill my time and fill the space with like small talk. If not, if you've got nothing to say, don't say anything. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just being around people who understand you and not even like on a deep, deep level, but just willing to listen. W- yeah, and, just and willing to get it. And and and, like, and if yeah. and if you take the time to explain, and they're not willing, then move on. There's people out there who are because it's not your. It's if you are a good person. Getting back to this thing about intentions. If down at your core you're a good person, whatever you do is done with good intentions. Then how you present yourself will be in a good way, and like you're just giving off good vibes, and people can accept that, even if you do things differently because different doesn't mean bad i like that um my 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 mum's uh like a a big like um special needs coordinator mm-hmm. um we've sort we've sort of cut coined the term uh instead of disability we call it a diffability oh right yeah. oh it's, it's cool i mean the, i think there are i don't again i don't see there's a i kind of don't think there's there's a stigma attached to the word disability. Yeah. And I'm still not sure myself whether I'm, whether I think autism's a difference or is a disability. I think there are some times where you're disadvantaged because you present differently to other people and then it's not being received well, or there's an extra barrier and you do have to explain yourself. Like it's another step that other people don't need to take. So is that then a disability? I'm not too sure where I stand on that. So I don't think I would mix the two words together because I do think they are two distinctly different things but as a like a play on words jokey thing yeah it's cool we're very good at different things um specific different things we're not so good at other things that's kind of like but then I, I don't think you can even then like you can't really generalize to that extent because that like i can smash organizing a 1000 ticket event whereas and other artistics organization levels wouldn't suit that social setting. So it's, it, you, yeah, like on, on the whole. That's a general term. Yeah, on, yeah. The, on the whole, you can say stuff like that. But once you give it a bit more thought, it comes a bit problematic, I think. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've, we've talked a few things about um, Christmas, a little bit about what autism means a little bit about what you can do and what other people can do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that that is all rounded up and all good. Amazing. Um, shall we talk, talk through some of your social media links, anything that you want to put out there? Obviously I'll put them in the description. So um, yeah, just, Shoot. So we have obviously Instagram. That's where I kind of like started off. That is adult and autistic. Then YouTube is, well, you can just search adult and autistic. It might come up, probably won't. So wouldn't do that yet. But other than that, as a way to find me on every other platform, just head over to the blog, which will probably be up by the time this episode's out, which is adult and autistic dot. I want to say .com. I think I bought the .com. Let's go with .com, adultinautistic.com. Uh, twi- uh, okay. It's not live yet. Dog. It's not live yet. Dog. It's a diff- that's, that's a different URL. Is it? Yeah, that's adulting with autism.org. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. the old one. <laughs> um, so the new one, I think I've got the .com. Uh, there was 
then Twitter. I just honestly chat the most rubbish on Twitter, but it's jokes. And who doesn't love a good meme every now and then? So that's T-Y-L-G-R-N-T. And yeah, I, you know what? I just say, you know what? For now, just go to Instagram until I sort everything else out. Just go there. <laughs> that's where the most consistency is and where you can get me. Look at their description. Most days. We'll put, we'll put them down. Um, yeah, so... Um... Oh, wait. Oh, my God. I forgot about my podcast. The Adulting Autistic Podcast. There's a couple of episodes up there already. And I spoke with Aspie and Al, who if you're on... Instagram, you'll probably see in some of her posts, she posts like Aspie tips every day. Pretty cool, really helpful girl. Um, and has mad into BTS or like K pop band or whatever. Um, then I did one about medication and autism and antipsychotics. And then I've got another one, and I can't remember who I did it with or what it's about. So you're going to have to go and find out for yourself. But yeah, that's the Adult, in, the Adult in Autistic podcast. Right. Well, I'll make sure to link all of that stuff down in the description nice so that so yeah uh i know it's um sometimes if you even if you have a good christmas you can have you can have a few lows after you know with all the build up you feel have a few lows if christmas has been bad just try to be easy on yourself um thank you so much for listening to this um podcast episode let's um let's let's say our goodbyes Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, I hope to talk to you soon and um, I hope that, you know, we can do some something further in the future. Yeah, it'd be sick to work with you again. I'll probably get you on my podcast, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, thanks for having me on and yeah, chat to you soon. See you later, peeps. Do you want to say goodbye? Oh, I didn't realise I had to. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs>